on beautiful minds it is your girl straight beautiful and i am here today with a very special guest this has been my friend for over 10 plus years her name is tiana molden <laughs> tiana graduated from the university of delaware with a bachelor's in speech language pathology so we have her here today we're going to do an interview today with her and she's gonna share some of her experiences. She has been overseas, so she's gonna share her experiences with that. She is also bilingual, so she's gonna share her experiences with that as well. So, let's get into the video. What made you choose the speech pathology path? So, I originally went into my um, undergrad with a degree in education, but I wanted some medical field kind of intertwined. Um, I spoke with my godmom, who is the director of a nursing home, and she mentioned speech pathology. Um, so I did some research, looked into speech pathology, and I realized that um, there's a need for speech pathologists. And it just so happened that a few months later, um, my little cousin was born with Down syndrome. Um, and we know that Down syndrome affects, um, is affected by communication disorders. Um, and then my grandfather, a few months later, had a stroke and was affected by communication disorder um, with his stroke. And so it kind of all just intertwined. And so I really then, you know, started to have the passion for this field. Um, and I think, you know, the most important thing that has really drawn me to the path of speech pathology is that everyone deserves a voice. What are all your degrees in specifically? Um, so I have a degree in speech language pathology from the University of Delaware. And I have a minor in psychology and in Spanish. I'm about to go to grad school to get my master's degree in speech language pathology from Loyola University. Congrats. Thank you. So exciting. Um, the journey to speech pathology graduate school isn't easy. Um, it takes a lot of hard work to get there. And, you know, just if anyone's interested in speech language pathology, make sure that, you know, you're getting at least a 3.5 GPA or higher. Um, you gather a lot of experience and you, um, you know, study hard for your GREs. It is a very competitive program to get into. So you said you have a minor in Spanish. Yes. And I know that you chose to do study abroad mm -hmm. in Panama. Panama. So how was your experience there and what made you choose, you know, to do study abroad? So yes, I do have a minor in Spanish. I studied abroad in Panama for a month. The experience was amazing. I think that um, everyone, if they have the opportunity to learn another language, should. We shouldn't be so stuck in just knowing English. Um, we need to branch out and be able to understand other people in other languages. It's very important and I want to actually do research in it when I get into graduate school. And I really want to be able to service children who are bilingual um, and provide services for children who speak Spanish. There are a shortage of bilingual speech pathologists as well. So what are your experiences with speech pathology? So I have many different experiences. I have had observation hours as an undergrad student in multiple settings, a hospital, a clinic, and a school. Um, I also have worked as a classroom therapy assistant at Easter Seals. And there I aided other therapists, PT, which is a physical therapist, OT, which is occupational therapist, and other speech language pathologists um, by making materials for them. I helped them with snack time, and I helped them use a play-based therapy approach to help children meet their goals um, during the, their sessions. I also currently am um, a licensed speech language pathology assistant, and I work at an elementary school with children and I work under a licensed speech language pathologist. So I am not able to write any goals or write any IEPs, but I actually service the children. So I actually provide speech therapy services at a table, we play games, we do different things that you know help elicit speech. So since you've worked in an elementary school, have you experienced children on the autism spectrum? Yes, I have. So what have you noticed like as far as their behaviors versus speech like how does that you know how does autism specifically correlate with speech pathology yeah so children with autism um, usually have challenges in the areas of communication and social skills so many times speech language pathologists can help um, children with autism 
and adults um, find the most appropriate means of alternative communication. That can include many different ways of communication, from gestures to picture support systems or visual support systems, such as the one right here, if you guys can see it. But this is I what? Goldfish. So these are picture supports, right? And they will, you know, provide the voice for the child. Um, so the child can go through and find different pictures. I want pretzel and then bring pretzel down here. And there's their sentence, I want pretzel. Um, and these are specific, and these support specific skills and challenges for the clients. So what would be like some final takeaways that you can give to parents or caregivers who do have children on the autism spectrum? So I think in general, it's important that parents and caregivers work on carryover. Um, that's a term that we use in our field. And that means that, you know, if I'm working in a school with your child and I'm using this picture communication system, then, you know, we want to work on having one of these at home for the child that they also can use. So it carries over so that the children know that, you know, this is their voice. This is what they need to use when they want to communicate. It's also very important, you know, just in general with children in language, you know, to work on reading with your child every night, um, you know, to work on that vocabulary building and things like that. Um, and it's also very important, you know, to help elicit speech and to let your child, you know, work on their own way of communication. Sometimes this might not work. This might not be best for your child. So, you know, just looking into those different avenues of alternative communication for children with autism. Um, and, you know, also being an advocate, you know, for autism, children with autism. Um, that's the most important so that they can be the best that they can be in all areas of their life. So after you complete your master's mm -hmm. degree in um, speech language pathology, mm -hmm. so what are your future plans after that is completed? So I actually have just kind of came up with this new plan. I originally wanted to work in the school system, um, but I think I want to become a travel speech therapy assistant where I would travel to different states, um, maybe in a diff different countries, and provide services to um, children who have you know, speech delays or communication disorders. And then future, future, um, I do want to open a private practice. Uh, there are shortage of speech language pathologists. I know specifically in Delaware, um, so, you know, some private practice of some sort, and I'm really excited for the future. And I'm really excited for you as well. Thank you. Thank you for always being there when I have questions about my nephew or anything mm -hmm. that, you know, is concerning to him. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you guys enjoyed Miss Tiana Molden here today. Um, she gave us a lot of good information. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Can you hit the what with me when I say do all of that? Okay, I'll try. Do all of that. And I will be back next week.